Hey, everyone. You know that saying, learn from your mistakes? Mm -hmm. Well, today, we're like taking a shortcut. We're learning from someone else's. Oh, I like that. We're diving into Second Time Entrepreneur by Premo George. Yeah. <laughs> He's this, you know, successful software product leader, repeat founder, clearly believes in sharing his um, battle scars so we don't have to get matching ones, That's right? Exactly. It's like a cheat sheet for avoiding the startup trenches. Right. Think of this deep dive like, it's like having coffee with Primo himself. Oh, I like it. Picking his brain about all the things he wishes he knew when he first started out. Yeah, yeah. And he kicks things off with a doozy. Uh-oh. A mistake so many entrepreneurs make. Yeah. Myself included, I'll admit it. Oh, really? He spent six months building a sauce product, <laughs> only to realize... Oh, no. Well, he'd forgotten about the most important part. Mm -mm, that's a bad feeling. Can you guess? Uh, let me think. Was it finding investors? I'll give you a hint. It, it's not about the features. Oh, okay. It's about the people. The people. Mm. Oh, you mean like building an audience. That's right. Building an audience. Ah, makes sense. He had this amazing cake, but no one to share it with. The classic mistake. It's so tempting to think, oh, I'll just figure out marketing once the product's perfect. Right, right. Build it and they will come. Yeah, but Premold learned the hard way. Building an audience, that needs to happen way before you even think about launching. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And there are so many reasons why. I mean, what's fascinating here is your audience. They're not just like potential customers. Right. They're your testing ground, mm -hmm. your feedback loop. Yeah. Even your cheerleaders. 100%. I love that. So imagine this, right? Launch day arrives. Okay. Yeah. Instead of frantically like sending out press releases, right. hoping someone notices, right. you've already got this engaged community yeah. eagerly waiting to see what you've created. They've been with you on the journey. Totally. Providing feedback. Yeah. Spreading the word. Absolutely. That's powerful. Huge. And that's what Promote discovered when he finally launched another product later on. This time, audience ready to go. Yeah. Night and day. I bet. So how'd he do it? Did he say? Oh, yeah. And the best part is, he doesn't just tell you what to do. He gives you the how. Ooh, late on me. He talks about using content marketing. Provide real value. Yeah, right? I love it. Creating a sense of community around your brand. It's essential. And strategically partnering with others to get the word out. Smart. But hold on, because this next insight, this is where things really clicked for me. It's this idea of who, not how. Who, not how. Okay. And it's something I think a lot of us struggle with, you know? Yeah. Especially in those early days of, like, building a business. Yeah, for sure. You want to control everything. Oh, totally. And Promote talks about this. Like, he used to try to do everything himself. Mm. Coding, design, marketing, even customer support. Whoa. He was a one-man show. He was a one-man band. Yeah. Running himself ragged. Yeah, not sustainable. No. And probably not doing any of it, like, particularly well, you know? Right, spreading yourself too thin. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so easy to fall into that trap, right? Totally. Been there. We think we have to be superhuman, capable of wearing all the hats. Superhuman, yeah. Yeah. You try to become a master of none. Yes. And as Pramo would realize, that's a recipe for burnout. Not to mention, you know, a surefire way to hit a ceiling in terms of what you can actually achieve. Hit a ceiling, yeah. You can only grow so much by yourself. Exactly. So the real superpower is in the who. Yeah, okay, the who. I like it. It's about building a team, even if it's, you know, just freelancers or contractors at first. Right, start small. Yeah. It's about, you know, identifying your strengths and then finding the right people to kind of fill in the gaps. Makes sense. So... Delegate the things you're not so good at. Yes. Right? And it's not even just about delegating tasks, right? It's about tapping into the expertise of others. Oh, okay, yeah. Leverage their skills, their experience to help you build something, you know, truly remarkable. Got it. So it's like building your own dream team, basically. Exactly. Your own personal A-team. And Promote actually credits this shift in mindset from how to who as one of the key factors in his success. Interesting. So instead of trying to figure out everything himself, he focused on finding the right people. Exactly. It allowed him to focus on what he did best and then surround himself with people who can do the rest. Smart. Delegation is key. It really is. Okay, so this next insight is all about choosing the right battlefield, you know, for your startup. Okay, the right battlefield. Got it. And it might surprise you. Oh, how so? Remember how we were talking about, like, the importance of building an audience? Yeah, yeah. Well, Promote argues that we should, like, apply that same thinking to actually 
choosing your market. Choosing your market. Okay. It's tempting, right, to go after these like untapped markets. Right. The blue ocean strategy. <laughs> yeah. The ones where no one else is playing. It's like the Wild West, right? Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. The potential for riches is alluring. Totally. But as Promode discovered, those like so called untapped markets. They're often untapped for a reason. Oh, interesting. What was he running into? They might be like too small, too niche. Right, right. Or just not ready for what you're offering. Yeah, that's a good point. He actually learned this the hard way when he tried to launch a product for like a very specific, very small customer base. Oh, no. Did it flop? <laughs> he thought he'd struck gold, but the market was just too limited to actually create, you know, a sustainable business. Ah, uh, yeah. Makes sense. So if chasing untapped markets is like a recipe for disaster, what's the alternative? Right. What does he say? Promote actually advocates for kind of the opposite, building in a proven market. Okay. So going where it's crowded. Yeah. One that's already been validated by like other players. Interesting. Think of it like this. Instead of like trying to hack your way through an uncharted jungle. Okay. You're entering, you know, a well-established city. I like that analogy. Right. There are roads, there's infrastructure, there's a built-in customer base. Yeah, it's all there ready for you. You can learn from, like, the pioneers who came before you. Well, that's a good point. Both their successes, but more importantly, their mistakes. Learn from their mistakes, yeah. Yeah. It saves you a lot of headaches. Right. Like, take Netflix, for example. They weren't the first ones to attempt, like, video streaming. True, true. But they learned from the missteps of companies like, you know, Blockbuster. Blockbuster, right. They didn't adapt. And they created a vastly superior experience. And look at them now. Totally. They're killing it. This idea of, like, building in a proven market, it doesn't mean you can't be innovative. Right, right. Or, you know, disrupt the status quo. Yeah. It just means you're being strategic about where you choose to, like, deploy your energy and your resources. Be smart about it. I like it. And speaking of strategy, let's talk about roadmaps. Roadmaps, okay. Hmm. Essential, right. Hmm. Or rather, why Primode thinks they're a terrible idea. <laughs> oh, he's anti-roadmap. Tell me more. I have to admit, this one made me laugh because I am, like, such a roadmap person. I love a good plan. But Primode brings up a really good point. Like, he opens the section with a Mike Tyson quote. Okay, let's hear it. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Ooh, that's a good one. And he's right, isn't he? Yeah. In the startup world, things change so fast. You can spend months crafting, like, the perfect roadmap, right. only to have it blown to pieces by, you know, some unforeseen curveball. Yeah. Happens all the time. It's like trying to navigate a maze with a fixed map. You might think you know the way, but what happens when you hit a dead end? Exactly. You have to be ready to pivot. Pramod's solution. Ditch the rigid roadmap and embrace agility. Agility. Instead of, like, clinging to a plan that might be outdated before you even launch. Right. Be flexible. Yeah. Be adaptable. And most importantly, be ready to pivot. Love it. So what does that look like in practice? Well, he's a big believer in short sprints. Okay. Constant iteration. All right, right. And using, like, real-world feedback to guide your decisions. Makes sense. It's less about, like, predicting the future and more about like responding to it effectively. Responding to it, yeah. He actually calls out companies like Kodak, Blockbuster, mm. even Yahoo, remember them? Oh yeah. They all had their roadmaps, they had their grand plans, and they weren't agile enough to adapt when the world changed around them. It's true, they stuck to their guns for too long. Exactly, so if we're ditching the roadmap, uh, embracing agility, what about that other big like startup obsession, perfectionism? Ooh, yeah. That's a tough one. This one, I think, hits close to home for a lot of us, right? Like, how many times have you delayed launching something because it didn't feel quite ready? More times than I can count, honestly. Right. Pramod would tell us to just, like, get over it. To ship it, right. He'd back it up with a quote. It's from LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman. Oh, okay, what's the quote? If you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. Oh, I like that. All right. So true. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to create, like, the perfect 
product. But the truth is perfection is a moving target. And while you're busy polishing every little detail. Someone else is already out there. Someone else is out there getting real world feedback and iterating like crazy. Exactly. That's why Promote is such a huge proponent of, you know, the lean startup methodology. Yeah, makes sense. Get a minimum viable product, your MVP out there quickly. Mm -hmm. Get feedback from real users and then use that feedback to, you know, make your product better. Iteration is key. He even has this like four week MVP rule. A four week rule, what is that? Uh, if you can't ship a basic version of your product within four weeks, something's wrong. Oh wow, okay. It's like a forcing function. Yeah, light a fire under you. Exactly, to prioritize like the essential value proposition. You yeah, know? yeah. And avoid getting like bogged down in all those unnecessary bells and whistles. Focus on the core value. <laughs> okay, ready for like another myth buster? Hit me. Let's talk about NDAs. NDAs, okay. Now, I know some people, they swear by them. NDAs can actually make you look inexperienced. Really? And create this like unnecessary air of secrecy. I never thought about it that way. Remember like how important it is to build an audience? Yeah, yeah. Well, that applies to like getting feedback, attracting potential collaborators too. That's a good point. Premod is a huge advocate for this build in public approach. Build in public, okay. Share your progress, your challenges, your wins. Yes. Don't be afraid to like let people see what you're working on. Be open about it. It's not about, you know, giving away your secret sauce. Right. It's about creating a sense of transparency and inviting others to be like part of your journey. I like that. It's collaborative. And now for the final gem of wisdom from second time entrepreneur. And this one might surprise you. Okay, what is it? Serve rich people. Serve rich people. Before you write this off as like elitist, you know, hear me out. Okay, okay. Primo's point is that it's often easier to build a successful business by focusing on customers who have like a high need for what you offer right. and the financial means to pay for it. Okay, yeah, I see what he's getting at. Think about it. If you're solving a real pain point for a customer base that has, you know, money to spend, mm -hmm. you're much more likely to generate revenue, which you can then reinvest in, you know, growing your business. Makes sense. Target those with high spending power. He gives the example of Tesla. They didn't start by trying to build an affordable electric car, you know, for the masses. They targeted the luxury market first. Mm. With the Tesla Roadster. The Roadster, yeah. They used the revenue from those like high end sales to fund the development of their more, you know, affordable models. That's a good strategy. So there you have it a whirlwind tour of like promo George's hard won wisdom. <laughs> I feel smarter already. We've covered like the importance of building an audience before you even build a product. Right. The power of who, not how. Love that principle. The kind of counterintuitive advantage of building in a proven market, yeah. the dangers of like rigid roadmaps, yeah. the importance of embracing agility, launching early, the myth of NDAs. In a lot. And then the surprising power of serving, you know, rich people. I'm gonna be thinking about that one. This deep dive has given me so much to think about and I hope it's done the same for you. If there's one thing I want you to like take away from this whole conversation, it's this. Learn from the mistakes of others. Because let's face it, we don't have time to make them all ourselves. Eat that the truth. If you're ready to dive, you know, even deeper into the world of second time entrepreneur, grab a copy of Pramod's book. And for those of you who, you know, want to take it a step further, join his Founders Club. Don't forget to use the code bookworm for a special discount. Hey. Now, I want to hear from you. What one action will you take today based on the insights from Second Time Entrepreneur? Share your takeaways. I'd love to keep this conversation going. Until next time, happy building. And remember, the greatest lessons are often learned from, you know, our mistakes.